The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the Daily Book of Concord reading. This is week two, week two, Monday, week two. Today we begin in the large catechism. We have the longer preface, uh, paragraphs one through ten, paragraphs one through ten. Again, this is Monday of week two of reading through the Book of Concord this year. So uh, there'll be a little bit of commentary here first before we begin in the reading uh, from the reader's edition of the Book of Concord. So let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From the large catechism, from the commentary, before we begin the preface, paragraphs 1 and 10, 1 through 10. In his preface to the small catechism, Luther vents his frustration over lay peoples abusing the freedom of the gospel. However, in this preface, he also focuses on the clergy's faults and failings. He chastises and rebukes lazy pastors who do as little as possible when it comes to preaching and teaching and who are lax in their own personal prayer and meditation on God's word. As usual, Luther doesn't tread lightly when expressing his concerns. He laments that people regard learning the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer as childish. He explains how he daily recites these texts and studies them. Luther takes pastors to the woodshed for neglecting their, to teach their congregations carefully. He provides many reasons for continued and careful reading and study of the Bible. The Preface of the Large Catechism A Christian's profitable and necessary preface and faithful serious encouragement from Dr. Martin Luther to all Christians, but especially to all pastors and preachers. They should daily exercise themselves in catechism, which is a short summary and epitome of the entire Holy Scriptures. They should always teach the catechism. We have no small reason for constantly preaching the catechism and for both desiring and begging others to teach it. For sadly, we see that many pastors and preachers are very negligent in this matter and slight both their office and this teaching. Some neglect the catechism because of great and high art, giving their mind, as they imagine, to much higher matters. But others neglect it from sheer laziness and care for their bellies. They take no other stand in their business and to act as pastors and preachers for their belly's sake. They have nothing to do but to spend and consume their wages as long as they live, just as they used to do under the papacy. They now have everything they are to preach and teach placed before them abundantly, clearly, and easily in so many helpful books. These truly are sermons that preach themselves, or sleep soundly, be prepared, and thesauruses, as they used to be called. Yet these preachers are not even godly and honest enough to buy these books or even when they have them to look at them or read them. Oh, they are completely shameful gluttons and servants of their own bellies. They are more fit to be swineherds and dog tenders than caretakers of souls and pastors. These pastors are now released from the useless and burdensome babbling of the seven canonical hours of prayer. I wish that instead of these they would read each morning, noon and evening, only a page or two in the catechism the prayer book, the New Testament, or something else in the Bible. They should pray the Lord's Prayer for themselves and their parishioners. Then they might respond with honor and thanks to the gospel by which they have been delivered from obvious burdens and troubles and might feel a little shame. For like pigs and dogs, they take nothing more than the gospel, from the gospel than this lazy, deadly, shameful, worldly freedom. The common people also respect the gospel altogether too lightly, and we accomplish nothing special, even though we work diligently. What, then, would be achieved if we were as negligent and lazy as we were under the papacy? To this laziness, such preachers add the shameful vice and secret infection of security and contentment. In other words, many see the catechism as a poor, common teaching, which they can read through once and immediately understand. They can throw the book into a corner and be ashamed to read it again. Yes, even among the nobility, one may find some clowns and penny pinchers who say, A, there's no longer any need for either pastors or preachers. B, we have everything in books. And C, everyone can easily learn it by himself. 
so they are happy to let the parishes rot and become empty. They let pastors and preachers worry and go hungry, just as crazy Germans are accustomed to do. For we Germans have such disgraceful people and must put up with them. But for myself, I say this. I am also a doctor and preacher, yes, as learned and experienced as all the people who have such assumptions and contentment that I act as a child who is being taught the catechism. Every morning and whenever I have time, I read and say word for word the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Psalms, and such. I must still read and study them daily, yet I cannot master the catechism as I wish, but I must remain a child and a pupil of the catechism, and am glad to remain so. Yet these delicate, refined fellows would, in one reading, promptly become doctors above all doctors, know everything, and need nothing. Well, this, too, is a sure sign that they despise both their office and the souls of the people. Indeed, they even despise God and his word. They do not have to fall. They do not have to fall. They have already fallen all too horribly. They need to become children and begin to learn their alphabet, which they imagine they have long outgrown. Mark 10, 15. Therefore, for God's sake, I beg such lazy bellies or arrogant saints to be persuaded and believe that they are truly, truly not so learned or such great doctors as they imagine. They should never assume that they have finished learning the parts of the catechism or know it well enough in all its points, even though they think they know it ever so well. For even if they know and understand the catechism perfectly, which is, however, is impossible in this life, there are still many benefits and fruits to be gained if it is daily read and practiced in thought and speech. For example, the Holy Spirit is present in such reading and repetition and meditation. He bestows every new and more light and devout, devoutness. In this way, the Catechism is daily loved and appreciated, better as Christ promises in Matthew 18.20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Besides, catechism study is a most effective help against the devil, the world, the flesh, and all evil thoughts. It helps to be occupied with God's word, to speak it, and to meditate on it. Just as the first psalm declares, people blessed who meditate on God's law day and night. Psalm 1-2 Certainly, you will not release a stronger incense or other repellent against the devil than to be engaged by God's commandments and words and speak, sing, or think them. Colossians 3.16 For this is indeed the true holy water and holy sign from which the devil runs and by which he may be driven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.